Welcome back to the 2017 Giant Monster Games Advent Calendar, where we go through and play every deck that has been on the channel, going from the least popular to the most popular. We are number 18, which means we are we're in a quite popular deck range, and I was never, ever expecting for Dredge on Earth, which is the deck for today, to ever get this high in the ratings. I don't know who was voting for this, guys, but whoever is doing it has been around forever and has somehow found this video, because it is the second video ever put up on the channel, and this deck is very, very weird. So let me explain what it's trying to do. Well, for starters, it is a Dredge deck, so we have cards like Stinkweed Imp and Golgari Thug, which allow us to dredge cards. Dredge is whenever this card is in your graveyard, you may, instead of drawing normally off the top of your deck, you may return whatever card is to your hand and then dredge for whatever number, which means putting that many cards from the top of your library into your graveyard. That's the first part of the deck. The second part of the deck is Unearth, so we have cards like Dredgescape Zombie and Extractor Demon, which have Unearth for very, very low mana cost. So, Dredgescape Zombie is a 2 1 4 1 if it's in our graveyard, so we can play it for its Unearth cost, which is if it's in this graveyard, we may play it comes into the battlefield, gets haste, and then we have to exile it a turn. Extractor Demon is a 5-5 flyer for 3 if it's in our graveyard, so that's super handy as well. So that's the second part of the deck. And then the third part of the deck, and the final, is we are trying to make these creatures extremely large as they come out of our graveyard. So we're doing that with Primal Force Mage and Amber Scanned Shaman. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name right. They are both making it so when a creature enters the battlefield, they get plus something, plus something. Primal Force Mage is giving it plus three, plus three, and the Shaman is giving them plus two, plus two. So, when we play a Dredgescape Zombie for one out of our graveyard, if we have a Primal Force Mage, it gets plus three, plus three, which means it is now a five, three, which means we can swing in and do some serious damage. And that is how this entire deck is supposed to be working. If you want to see the entire deck tech, because there is only a deck tech, up in the right-hand corner, you can check it out. It's painful almost as painful as Soul Sisters, and I want to point out that I've never actually done gameplay of this deck because I actually built and playtested this deck in paper, not actually online. So this is going to be the first time I show you guys how this deck actually plays, so wish me luck because it is weird and janky and um, probably one in three times doesn't work very well, but the other two times it does, so we're going to see if it works. Well, here we go, playing a different type of dredge deck. We cannot keep this opening hand. This is like a absolutely terrible opening hand. Let's uh, mulligan this away. <laughs> and what I mean by a different kind of dredge deck is you've probably heard of the like good old-fashioned dredge deck with prized amalgams and it plays red and green and we're not playing that at all. We're playing a g very very weird and extremely janky. We're gonna keep this by the way. We are playing a deck that is designed to dredge and... Ooh, ooh, do I want to keep that? No. We're gonna put that on the... It doesn't really matter. We are going to probably Evolving Wilds first turn here. So, Evolving Wilds, cracking it right away for, I guess, a forest. Technically, we should have done that on our opponent's end step, but I'm not too concerned. And grab a forest, ship it to our opponent's turn, and go. So, this is a different type of dredge deck. It is a dredge on Earth deck. So, we're going to be kind of pairing up two different mechanics. First is, obviously, dredge, uh, where you get to draw cards. Uh, you get to put cards in your library instead of, oh, search for tomorrow, some kind of ramp deck. Uh, you get to basically put cards into your graveyard instead of drawing cards. And on Earth is, as you can see here, you can then play this card into your graveyard and then exile it into turn. So, we're going to try and do that. While we try and do that, we're also going to... Um, sorry, I'm thinking now. What is the best plan of action? I think the best plan of action is going to be probably Evolving Wilds Green Seeker. Yes, this is the best plan of action here. Because we can use Green Seeker to pitch stuff, specifically Rotting Rats, or hopefully if we draw into another, or into a dredge card, a dredge creature, which we have a bunch of them, we can throw it into the graveyard and then dredge it at the beginning of our next turn because we're kind of at that point. We want to start dredging stuff now. So let's find out. We are going to go to our opponent's end step, um, and then we're going to do that. So, yeah, this is what the, the objective of the deck. Sometimes this deck works really well, by the way. Sometimes this deck, mm, not so much. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of hit and miss sometimes. Okay, let's crack this guy. And what do we need more of? I think double black because we need black black for the extractor demon technically. So grabbing the black. Green actually could have been a good idea as well actually. Green would have actually been better. That's a misplay on my part, but it's not the end of the world. Um, there's a dredger. So I think what we do is we actually go like this. We go like this, tossing the Golgari Thug. So we get a dredger into the graveyard, and then we get to go and fetch up land. Now we can draw that forest. Play the forest, and then set our Wayfinder right away. 
Set a Wayfinder, we get to put cards, we get to reveal cards, and then put some into the graveyard. So, Dreg's Gate Zombie, ooh. Um, I think we're going to go with the Jungle Hollow. Because we don't really need the mana right away, and it'll give us both types of mana, technically. And then ship it to our opponent, where our opponent will then say, What the heck is going on over here? So, yeah. <laughs> this is, um, it, again, this deck is funny and janky, but fun as heck to play. Sometimes it has really good matchups, though, I will say. And our opponent gets to go fetch up a land now, so getting some actual mana ramp. Uh, we don't technically get mana ramp, we just get guaranteed land drops with Green Seeker because we don't get to put them into play. So it's technically not ramp. Ramp is where you get to play extra lands and you don't see much good ramp, or very many good ramp cards out there. There's a handful of them, um, like Search for Tomorrow or Sakura Tribe Elder um, or Kodama's Reach, but again, Kodama's Reach is like a three drop, so... Oh, whatever. What is this? Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under enchanted player's control, that player loses one life and you gain one life. That's neat. <laughs> not, it's not neat at all. That sucks. I mean, that um, that's gonna hurt us a lot. Uh, let's see. Do we have a way around it? Is gonna be the next question. And we are going to dredge the thug. Extractor demon is really good. Um, grapple with the past. I think we're pretty good on the like filling our graveyard with stuff front. Um, so I don't really want to dredge a ton more. But I think what we're going to aim to do is, do we swing in? Do we just start doing the like attack plan? Uh, the attack plan might be a good idea. The problem is, uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to play Jungle Hollow. Comes into play tapped, unfortunately. And then I think we do probably going to be Rotting Rats. Maybe, I think we're going to swing at both these guys first. Probably gonna swing both these guys first. See what our opponent does. Our opponent's waiting to say, like, what's this guy's playing Jungle Hollow? Don't play Jungle Hollow, by the way. Kids, if you're upgrading this deck, don't play Jungle Hollow. This is a terrible deck. I say kids, but I'm pretty sure that majority of you guys are like 25 to 35. So, um, tell your kids, assuming you have them, don't play Jungle Hollow. That's my that's my advice. My parenting advice is tell your children. Uh, attack with all creatures, by the way. Uh, tell your children not to play Jungle Hollow. It's a terrible card. But I have this one because this is supposed to be like a super budget deck. So I think it's sitting at uh, $40 right now. Originally it was $35. But Golgari Thug went up in price, unfortunately. So we swing in for two damage. Not the most amazing thing ever. And I think we're just going to get more bodies onto the table. I know our opponent's going to drain us a little bit. Rotting Rats. Always yield, tossing the thug, because that is going to be a card we're going to throw out. And then we're probably going to play the green seeker right away as well. What we need, and we're probably not going to, we're probably going to start drawing cards actually, because right now we want to get, and here's a green seeker, we'll take a little damage from it, but it's good. Oh, our opponent tosses away a dinosaur. Scary dinosaur. Feels like our opponent is kind of playing like a, a standard deck that has some modern cards in it. We're going to see how that pans out for them. Again, the reason why... Ooh, creature tokens get minus one, minus one. That doesn't do anything. That is... This card should not be in your main deck, guy. Eh? This is a sideboard card. Strictly sideboard card. I mean, so few decks actually play with creature tokens. Hey, he's going to destroy target land. He's going to destroy our jungle hollow. You're breaking my heart, friend. You're breaking my heart. Okay, so go to our turn. We are not going to dredge. We are just going to draw regularly. Ooh, Extractor Demon. That's really fun. Um, that is really fun, actually. Uh, so fun, in fact, that we're just going to swing in normally and not play it. I mean, we could go and fetch up another land. That is an option. Um, because we need two more lands, technically, to play it. And Green Seeker is what really allows us to fetch up lands. So why don't we do that? Let's um, let's swing with these guys. And again, the thing is we can play Extractor Demon out of our graveyard for cheaper. It's a three drop to get out of our opponent. And we can do this at instant speed, yeah. Reveal, yep, done. Okay, there we go. We're going to leave it up. Because we are planning on pitching this. What is this? When enters battlefield, target opponent creates a creates four 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature tokens. Oh... I see now. Hunted Troll killing this thing. There you go. Well, that's a thing. So we don't get our 
creature tokens. So yeah, I can understand now why I have this in the deck. <laughs> I understand now. That's a fun card. Hunted Troll. So we lose all of our creature tokens. Our opponent gets a bunch of life off that as well. That's pretty fun. That's actually very fun for our opponent. Uh, well, let's do the thing where we pitch Extractor Demon. And we might as well fetch up a Swamp, I guess. Swamps are always fun. And do we dredge? I think the answer is no. We still don't dredge. That's good, though. That's very good. That is absolutely what I want to play. Uh, super rad. And at this point... What do I do at this point? I don't really Extractor Demon. Because we kind of want to make sure that we... If we're going to play Extractor Demon, we're going to get more than just... Four damage, because right now it Extractor Demon deals one damage to us, and then we gotta swing in and do four damage to him because he gains a life from it. So dealing four damage is not gonna win us the game. If we get a Primal Force Mage or the other one that is not Primal Force Mage but has the exact same ability, ah, uh, Lame Sauce, Crumble to Dust, Lame Sauce. Well, our opponent gets to search our library and everything. We don't have any more of them. We're only running a single one of these guys. Because I mean, probably could run more than one. Probably should run more than one, but we're only running one. That's fine. I take it back. Our opponent seems to actually have a pretty interesting deck going on here. Um, I will say... Oh, Stone Rain. This is just old Stone Rain. <laughs> okay. So, going to our turn. We are not going to dredge. We are going to draw. Ooh, Sever the Bloodline. Uh, I think we sever the Bloodline on this guy. Bam. Goodbye. Exiled. Not even go to your graveyard. Just goes away in general. And and then I think we play the land, I guess. And then swing in for with all of our creatures, I guess. Seems like a fun thing. Fun thing to do. Attack with all creatures. Ship it to our opponent's turn. Our opponent has some fun little in interesting synergies going on here. I'll give it to our... I'll give that to him. Interesting little synergies. We're swinging in for 1-1s, one which is super funny. So what we need to do is we actually need to draw into... Hey, there's the dagger. More standard stuff. <laughs> a lot of standard cards in our opponent's deck. So this is what? Whenever... What is it? Enter the battlefield, opponent creates two zero one tokens. Or zero two. Oh, they get minus one, minus one. So they're actually zero ones. We still take damage from it, though, and our opponent still gains life. So they're minus one, one creature tokens. Not the funnest for us. We don't really need them. They can be blockers, though, theoretically. And going to our turn, we are not going to dredge. We have a lot of stuff in the graveyard already. We were actually looking for... Well, not necessarily that either. Um, mind you, that does allow us to play... What, oh, five, six, seven. Uh, four, five, six. No, we don't have enough yet. Um, man. Man, oh man, oh man. I think we just go to combat and swing with a bunch of stuff. I don't think we really have a plan. We're kind of out of gas here before until we get like a Primal Force Mage. And even if we have a Primal Force Mage in the graveyard, then we can actually get it back. But we don't. We also have stuff like Grapple of the Past to help us get stuff out of the graveyard as well if we need it. More orcs. Whenever a creature you control attacks, if any player loses a life, I gain a life. Hmm. Neat. So that means if he attacks in. So he's doing this kind of neat thing where he's just trying to like drain our opponent. It's like an aristocrat's deck, but weirder. Not bad, just weirder. Grapple with the Past. Hmm. Do I want to play Grapple with the Past? What would I grab out of here? It's return, what, a land, creature or a land. So I almost think playing Extractor Demon. So I think we're going to go this way. Um, and then we're going to return Extractor Demon. Unless we see a Primal Force Mage, which we don't. We see a bunch of... Uh, yeah, I think we're going to go this way. Okie dokie. And we can't play this yet. We can play it next turn. Uh, in the meantime... We will ship it to our opponent. Yes. Marvelous. Uh, so basically the game plan is going to be play Extractor Demon and start swinging for five every turn. And hopefully our opponent doesn't like have enough shenanigans to deal us enough damage to you know, aristocrats us to death. Opponent plays the Evolving Wilds as well. <laughs> Again, Evolving Wilds is such a bad card. Such a bad card. <laughs> I don't play Extractor Demon. Or don't play Evolving Wilds either. I say this, but we're playing here. Because this is a super budget deck. Um, okay, he's going to equip it to the creature. 5-4. Not to the funnest. He doesn't have trample. So we are just going to chump block with the stupid little plant tokens that he gave us. 
Yes. Does it trample? No. Um, he doesn't attack in. Interesting. Okay, well, if you don't want to attack in, that's perfectly fine by me. Oh, there's Primal Force Mage. That's exciting. Um, do I play Primal Force Mage? I think I do. Primal Force Mage will allow us to actually start getting in some super value. Super value against our opponent. Because the things get plus three, plus three, and trample. So we can probably... What? I think we're going to do Dread... 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 Eh. Cancel. Uh, Dreadscape Zombie for a black. We're going to lose some life from it, which is fine. Comes back. We're going to get... Yeah, I always yield to this as well. So it comes in as a giant creature. <laughs> um, what else do we want to buy? I don't really want Rotting Rats. Um, I do think I want the other Dreadscape. I think so. Yeah. So we'll bring back the other Dreadscape as well. And we're probably just going to swing in for ham. Like, go all all out on this attack right now. So, here we go. Going to combat. Attacking with everything but the plant tokens, because at least we can block with them. And then that's the way it's going to be. So, attack with all creatures. Except for those two, obviously. Which is nice. It doesn't, doesn't even allow you to attack with them, because they can't physically deal damage. Smart. Oh, and they have defender. Never mind, they have defender. <laughs> I don't even see that. So, this is a lot of damage coming in for our opponent. See if they have anything in mind. Does he have anything in mind? I mean, he obviously can block here. Um, he still takes one damage from these guys. This is 10 on its own. And then next turn, we're probably going to... Um, I think at this point, we're probably going to dredge. Because if we can get a double, another extractor demon in the graveyard, we can extractor demon out for a bunch more damage. A bunch more damage. Oh, he's going to go that way. Okay. I mean, I'm completely fine with him blocking these things. At this point, we don't need to be fetching up more stuff. So, opponent goes to 5 life. These guys get exiled. Goodbye, my drugscape zombies. And then going to our opponent's turn. So, ooh, uh, what does our opponent feel like doing is the next question. Been an interesting game so far. Um, I love playing against other interesting jank decks that are trying to do interesting synergies. So he plays a search for tomorrow. I mean, that's fair enough. I guess he needs more red. Maybe he needs double red. Maybe he needs double red so he can do... Ooh, if he has a... What is the word I'm looking for? Pyroplasm? That would be really bad. <laughs> really bad for us. Could have Pyroplasm. Um, I, think, I think Pyroplasm is just two mana, though. He could also have... Um, Anger the Gods. Anger the Gods would be really good against our deck because it exiles all of our stuff. Rather than just killing it. And does he attack in? Attacking in would be a scary thing for him. Again, we have an Extractor Demon in the graveyard, so technically next turn we win. Unless he has a way of dealing with it. Unless he has a way of dealing with it. We'll both find out. Two guys in hand. We're in a C. He might not even be looking at our graveyard, to be honest, as well. So, Thug is Dredge 4, Stinkweed Imp is Dredge 5, so we're going to Stinkweed Imp. Dredging, much more, many more cards. And, ooh, not, nothing, 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 nothing good got dredged away. Well, I think we just Extractor Demon. Go like this. Extractor Demon. He gets plus 3, plus 3, which is enough to kill our opponent when we swing in. But we can't just do that. We think we need to also... Rotting Rats? No. Uh, we're going to play Stinkweed Imp. That's what we're going to do. Because Stinkweed Imp also has Death Touch. So if he swings with this guy, he dies. Attack with all creatures. Shipping it to our second main phase. See if our opponent has an answer. I mean, this guy is flying. So I'm not sure how he stops 8 damage coming in. I don't really know. We're about to find out, though. Does our opponent have an answer? The answer is... I mean, the one reason why this deck is actually really weird to play, going into more mechanics of how this deck, is it's weird because there's times where you want to dredge, but there's also times where you don't want to dredge. Hey, we are sideboarding. Yeah! Sideboard! <laughs> so you guys saw what the deck is supposed to do. Like, that's exactly what the deck is supposed to do. Um, we need a way of getting rid of these kind of things. So we're going to be playing this. Sever the Bloodline doesn't really seem very valuable, to be honest. Uh, Extractor Demon is very nice. Primal Force Mage is nice. Not to the bone. Yeah, I think not to the bone come out, come out, actually. 
Stinky Damp, you definitely stay in. This guy is amazing. He stays in. This is the other one was it? Amber Sand, Amber Scad Shaman. He's also really good. Actually, should be running three of him and three Primal Force Mages because he can dash himself in, which is really good. Uh, grapple with the past. I think we can take a single Grapple with the past out. We need to put in as many nature claims as possible because he's playing like a weird enchantment artifact deck thing. So yeah, and uh, Wayfinder is. And Wayfinder can come out as well, single one. And we're gonna back like that. Ba bam Oh, I should have taken out the Lich Lord. Dang it. Um, Gerard is nice, but not amazing in this matchup. I mean, he does get really big and strong, which is maybe okay. Um, actually, no, he's actually really good in this matchup. What am I saying? He's fantastic now that I think about it. So, this is a. This is an opening hand. <laughs> non-committal statement from Adrian. And I think we'll keep it. We're gonna keep it. Uh, good luck to our opponent, GL. And our opponent plays first, drops a swamp, doesn't really do anything else. There's the enchantment that's gonna do the tokens. We don't actually care about that enchantment. Um, we care about the other one that actually makes us lose life. This one is not as a nuisance as it could be. So we now are going to Evolving Wilds, yeah. And then ship to our opponent's turn, and step will Evolving Wilds to get um, get something else. Gonna be the plan. Also, our opponent looks like they went down to six. That sucks. I always I always feel bad whenever someone has to go, like, mulligan down. Always feels bad. Never feels good. Um, this guy's really good, though. This is a card you don't see very often. So this is the one we don't want to deal with. That's the bad one. This is the one that allows it, that basically going to make him, like, drain. Drain us very quickly. So we actually are going to hopefully, hopefully... Uh, find our way into something that'll get rid of that. So here we go, getting a swamp because we want swamps. And going to our turn, there's the shaman. Man, this is the best day ever. This is like Christmas land over here. I think what we do is we go this way. We play the uh, play the dredgescape zombie because we can just swing in with him a little bit here and there. This is gonna be always yield. And what we're gonna be aiming to do is we're gonna play down a primal force mage. And then we're going to start dashing in this guy. Because the nice thing about this guy is you you can dash him in. And this is why I was saying I should actually be running three of him and three of the Primal Force Mages. Is because you can dash this guy in, which means he gains haste. And when he enters himself, he gets plus two, plus two. So if you play him for his dash cost, he comes in as a four, four. If you already have a Primal Force Mage in play, he gets an additional plus three, plus three. So that becomes super scary, super fast. And our opponent just will never be able to deal with it. So he's ghost quartering his own swamp, looking for a different color land, I guess. I feel like if our opponent was playing proper fetch lands, which, I mean, they're not that much more expensive than this thing, uh, he would have a much better time at getting the proper lands. So one thing when you're playing a three color deck, oh, search your library for two lands. Um, that's one big thing about when you're playing a multicolored deck, is you just really need, especially in modern, you really need the proper mana base, otherwise you're handicapping yourself more than anything else. So... Yes. One of the things, actually, with the Dragon deck that is coming out um, next, not this upcoming weekend, but the weekend after, so in two weeks, basically. <laughs> um, that's one big thing with that one, is it's just trying to... I'm going to be probably, what I'll end up probably doing with that deck, is putting up two versions. One is the budget casual, and one is the semi-budget... Ooh, Shatter Demon's not good. Uh, but we can always play something else. So what we do is we play the Primal Force Mage. Probably, probably should have played it on my second main uh, second main phase. And then we swing in for one with the Dregscape Zombie. Shipping it through to our opponent. Um, anyways, yeah, I'll probably play... I'll probably post two decks. One will be the budget deck, which will be like a $50, $60 Dragon's deck, which will be awesome. And then the other one's going to be probably like a $130, $140 deck, which is still not like not not budget because the not not budget deck would be like six seven hundred dollars mostly because of the mana base uh so this will be like a you know mid-rangey mana base based deck so most of the money goes into the mana base just to make it so the deck runs properly because there's also a difference between splashing a color and having color as a primary so if you need access to a color on turn one or two in any potential situation you're kind of at the point where you're no longer, like, splashing a color, really. Uh, and what do I think here? I think I start doing the dash plan? I could. I think we, that's I think that's what we're going to do. We're just going to see if he has an answer. If he doesn't have an answer, then we're going to just... <laughs> we'll probably play Rotting Rats and pitch the Extractor Demon. 
if he does not have a plan. Because he may have a way of just blowing this guy up or blowing up for a Pyro Force Mage. Uh, so he can come into play. And this is going to be always yield. I don't, need to, I, don't, I don't need to see these triggers. I don't need to see them. And then I guess I swing in for, what is this? Attack with all creatures so at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 damage? Seems like, as always, a reasonable and fair game of magic. So this is what this deck is trying to do, right? We have backup plans, which is nice. I mean, that's the one thing about this deck is assuming it can survive to, like, turn 4, it, it has a huge amount of sustainability. It just, it is really hard to deal with. It has a ton of mid-range capabilities, and it has a lot of different game plans. So, I mean, right now, we're just going to go in with the Primal Force Mage, Ambassad Shaman, swinging in game after game after game. But, I mean, what if we didn't have these in play? We still have, like, Extractor Demon in our graveyard we can play out. We have a bunch of dredge stuff. Oh, opponent calls it GG. GG. Thanks for the games. This has been um, Giant Monster Games <laughs> Advent Calendar, playing the jankiest of jank. Oh, I revealed my head as well. Um, playing the jankiest of jank dredge deck. I really love this deck, but it is very weird and very janky. Actually, needs an upgrade. <laughs> Until next time, though, don't forget to game like a giant monster. Thanks for watching the Giant Monster Games Advent Calendar. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more videos just like it. A huge shout out to all of the Patreon supporters. You guys are helping make videos like this. And if you want to pick this deck up, there is a link below with an affiliate link so you can grab this entire deck on MTGO.